I personally lost about 25 kilos. I was extremely overweight. I lost 25 kilos. I did it the wrong way. To be honest, like purpose will take you to some extent to wake up every day and keep at it. At the magnitude that we are trying to keep at it is tough. Beta, I have to say, I don't understand your business or your <laughs> business model, but I'm really proud of whatever you're wow. doing. I feel your closest relationships can emotionally take you up and they also can emotionally really yeah. take you down. We fight, we argue, but we leave the room saying, listen, you're responsible for this, you decide, this is my opinion. And when I say vibe, I think the, the underlying is actually trust. Where, you know, when you're sitting in that room, you know that again, everyone is driven by that same objective of making yoga life, you know, sort of the circle of trust of health for India. India ko to healthy bana liya yaar, am log ko kya, you know, like it happens because you're just literally working 24-7. If you're not doing it physically, your brain doesn't stop. Is, can you bring in protein with every meal, right? Can you change the order of the way you eat food? So eat your protein first, eat your fat second, have your fiber and then have your carbs, right? It manages your sugar better. Depending on the journey you are at, the only piece of advice I would say is that try and tell yourself that you'll be a little bit better tomorrow. Yeah. And maybe start somewhere. Start somewhere. Yeah. I don't think that when people start their health journey, they should be like, this is where I want to get to. No. That's not what health is about because you know what health is a lifestyle it's about consistency it's about doing and staying at it every day so it can't be a goal yaar it's a journey you have to do it every day i think that's the biggest like if i have to give one piece of health advice i'm like think of health as a journey entrepreneurship is a mix of hard work and luck and right things happening at the right time follow our content you might be able to make <laughs> some better choices for health about health like i do consumer calls like I try and speak to people that I bought from us, like random consumers. And they've done so much research on the product. They, they've understood that back of back. They're like, we've seen your age-tested report. Then wow. Katrina Madam also said, it's authentic. Then we've taken it. And so you'll see, yes, like everything doesn't sell everywhere. Right? I'll see a lot of interesting trends. Like I'll see like Northeast has a huge pull for women's health, which is something very interesting to me. On the other hand, let's say a man who's suffering, suffering from cholesterol, right? Can he get onto this platform and get up? Like then whatever he browses, he can have that peace of mind saying, Main is me sabhi jo bhi buy karunga, I know that it is going to be safe for the make of my body. Yeah, it's a responsibility. It's not just a business. I get a consumer complaint that says, you, you gave me a wrong product, it harmed me. Or like I'm diabetic and you sent me a product that has sugar. I think I'm a better mother because I have yoga life and I get out there every day and I'm building and I'm doing something which which has a greater purpose and I'm doing something where uh, you know especially when you have a girl mm. I want her to believe that she can be more than what the world tells her that she can be you know entrepreneurship is great like it, it will definitely give you a high like no other like when you build when you see success when all of those things happen but I think get into it for the right reasons and go the way mm. you know my, my dad always talked about He's like, but that's a thousand day theory. And if you give up on the 900th day, mm. yeah, that's three years. Mm. If you give up on the 900th day, then you, you, you've just missed out on something that you've been. And we great to have you on Game Room. Thanks, thanks for, for thanks for taking out time. Uh, I have been following what you guys are doing. I'm, I'm myself a health freak uh, and I absolutely love what you guys are doing. Uh, would love to hear uh, what is it that you are building and why are you building this? Yeah, no, thanks so much. I mean, I love meeting other health freaks firstly. Uh, that's, that's a sign that India is moving in the right direction. Uh, but in terms of what we're building, I think we really started out saying, you know, we're reaching that trajectory where most Indians today are now beginning to talk about health, right? Like, if you think about 10 years ago, dinner table conversation was not about health. People would sit there and, you know, discuss. You would still maybe talk about makeup to an extent, but never health. Today, I think health is almost being spoken like a badge of honor. Like you do a marathon, you will talk about it. You will put it up on social. You go to the gym, you will talk about it. You will put it up on social. And I think that's telling for the generation that's to come, right? And I think that that's sort of the... I want to take on the most integral part of the health story of India. So I'm really here to, you know, sort of direct India towards becoming more health conscious and like really 
sort of take on the onus saying that you know i'm sharing this responsibility with you as an indian to make you more healthy and i think hopefully eventually lend to the productivity and economy of india so what you're doing is not easy um, the mission <laughs> that you are kind of uh, you know chasing is very very beautiful uh, which is making people healthy with the pandemic of diseases that we have this is yes. this is something which is which is very important for uh, you know if someone comes and makes you healthy i think it's a very very important uh, you know thing that you're doing yeah. but uh, this journey also has a uh, lots of ups and downs uh, mm-hmm. you also come from a background wherein this may or may not be a survival for you and you also have left a very cushiony job of yours yeah. uh, for this purpose yeah so i just want to understand what what went in the background uh, what drives you to even drive this purpose uh, <laughs> that's a, a well it's a difficult question um i think there's couple of things right i think one is obviously so i had a personal journey of health when i was actually very young um i personally lost about 25 kilos i was extremely overweight i lost 25 kilos i did it the wrong way um you know it went on a crash i had lost my health entirely because at that point my understanding of health was to look thin hmm. right and that's what actually where my passion for health started it was that long ago so actually my first startup was also in health and wellness wherein i launched like a it was a health and wellness platform for experiences so you could basically go to any gym any studio in bombay hmm. you didn't need a membership uh that's where it started then from there when i went to amazon funnily ended up working in health again so i launched a health and wellness brand called amfit nutrition for them um across europe and then when i went to unilever i continued working in health uh wherein we brought um, oli which is a gummy brand we brought that to southeast asia and so when i came back i thought it was only fair you know that health is something i love i've personally been touched by it and i've seen life's change right like when you make this sort of front and center of your existence like everything changes uh, and i really wanted to be able to do that and sort of drive that mission right but to be honest like purpose will take you to some extent to wake up every day and keep at it at the magnitude that we are trying to keep at it uh, is tough that is the reality right i mean yes in a small circle you can influence you can make some changes you can drive some health decisions to do it for india is uh, taking on a much much larger responsibility so we obviously take it very very seriously uh, but i think uh, you know what makes me get up and get at it every day is just like i think the bug to build because uh, i've seen it in my family for four generations where like i'm like a fourth generation entrepreneur like right from my great granddad and so you know it's something that i've just seen day in and day out so it's amazing that i get to do it with sort of a passion that i really love like i love health and i love entrepreneurship and it's come together so it's just it's perfect so you come from a family wherein you know there have been uh, entrepreneurs in different generation and just coming out and building yoga life uh, also could be very difficult because uh, yeah you have successful entrepreneurs uh, and again uh, venturing to do something which is not a traditional family business also exposes you to be not able to succeed you know yeah. as well yeah so did you have that fear or uh, why you didn't choose the path of uh, probably you know taking ahead your family business in some yeah. shape or form no fair enough i mean this is a really valid question so uh, i originally am a chemical engineer right that's where i started um, in terms of education and Uh, my family business is also in chemical engineering so it it was only fair to assume that i would take that on right but i think i've been very lucky uh, to have a role model like my father and if and when i were to join the family business also it was a very it was a very personal choice so my father always told me look this is an option for you it's entirely your choice if you want to do it or not so actually right out of grad school i did it um, join the family business i was there for 2 years um but i i was enamored by tech right and i didn't get it's chemicals is still relatively a traditional business i didn't get the joy and the high of you know and i always used to tell my dad i said dad i want to have something of my own and i want to feel for it the same way that you feel for prasol which is his business i said that spring that you have when you wake up and you know like he's like 65 
and my father travels across India every day like wow. to the factory like you know over the weekend he was staying at Mahad because one of our factories is there or he's going to Kapoli or he's you know I want to have that as well right and um, he's actually so supportive and he was like you know what I'm right here and if you want to take chances do it while I'm around and actually he pushed me right so and and he's always been of the opinion that if you want to do something go get some experience in that space and so when i told him tech he was like look you need to go to the best um you know the best company in the world where they are at the forefront of tech and so i was like okay amazon you know they're changing the world with tech that's where i want to go and that's where i want to learn um and you know i think it was the best thing that could have happened so you know came back and when we came back and started huga life which is so different so so different from the chemicals traditional business i still remember my dad on the day that we raised our first round of funding right and obviously it was some sort of this was 2021 so valuations were ridiculous anyway um that day he called me and he was like beta i have to say i don't understand your business or your <laughs> business model but i'm really proud of whatever you're wow. doing so yeah so maybe I, maybe i made some right decisions along the way so what uh, what do you carry from amazon or hul what what do you think uh, you learned there and which is helping you build your life today i actually carry a lot of learnings from there a lot like i credit everything i know about e-commerce to amazon because the most wonderful thing about my time there was i had obviously incredible bosses but the beauty of the company is that they will they will take a project and they will just throw you into it and they will be like figure it out right and nobody can teach you these things unless you're doing it for yourself and learning for yourself right so when i was at amazon um i built private label consumables so basically these brands actually didn't exist uh, and i ended up launching two global brands and one european brand but what i took forward is actually a lot of like leadership styles i took forward their leadership principles so a lot of the things i i you know i often tell my team is um you know amazon taught me how to recognize two way doors and one way doors right so when you're in a startup don't overthink yeah don't sit in that boardroom discuss 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 data 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 i was like go out there and try it if this is a decision you can reverse you will learn most by trying rather than sitting and you know just sort of brainstorming about it uh, so that is a very sort of key thing they also taught me how to zoom in and how to zoom out right you have to you have to have the ability to deep dive when it's needed but you also have to have the ability to trust your gut sometimes because business is a beautiful mix of the two right you can't you can't always be dependent on data you can't always just work on gut um and so i take a lot of those things forward what i learned at unilever was extremely different from what i learned at amazon which was beautiful as well because you know amazon is like extremely sort of like the mentality is fail fast get out there try unilever obviously because they have this massive reputation to maintain right like they've been around for so long their brands mean so much to so many people um the thought process of like risk mitigation was something that i learned beautifully from unilever right and i think together having taken all of those into this business it's amazing because i've seen a super fast paced business a relatively slow paced business but extremely you know a brilliant business to to be privy to um and i'm i'm managing to am amalgamate both of what i've learned and sort of uh, you know bring it into huga life so for me i'm extremely thankful for those experiences that i've had but but tell me one thing uh, the pace at which uh... the the startups are growing yeah. or they want to grow yeah is there a way to mitigate any kind of risk because or does that come in way of your growth you yeah. know as well yeah um you know that's the thing i mean uh, and i will go back to what i said before in terms of my two way door and one way door philosophy and the way that we operate right that when it's a two way door and it's something that's not going to imp- like it's a it's a decision that's easily reversible do it yeah don't think about risk there don't think about what ifs and how can we do this best get out there like there's a there's a beautiful example of um, you know a consultant was once asked i want to set up an ice cream shop in this mall and they were doing this massive like you know the whole business model and the president and how do we do this and how do we do that they were estimating traffic blah 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 the consultant told them you know what go to the mall 
just set up the door of the ice cream shop that's it huh and see what is the footfall you're getting right so that's like your two way door mentality because what would you have lost by setting up a door wow right um and and i'd really like to take that mm-hmm. into the way we operate like there's so many times when we're fighting on like product and this will happen and that will happen and we're like let's just get out there and try mm-hmm. right so that one part of 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 things allows you to go fast and move really quickly but on the other hand especially in yoga life i'm i'm dealing with the health of india right i can't be like for example i can't mess around on compliance mm-hmm. i don't care how long it takes me to ensure that we have all of the uh, compliance documents in place to ensure that you know expiry dates on fasai licenses and such are in place i don't care if that takes me 6 months that brand will launch after 6 months i cannot like that is something that i'm not willing to take a risk on right um or for example when it comes to like security of like consumer data and stuff like that right that once you mess up if you lose trust of a consumer you can't ever get it back um so i think it's it, you've got to like in a startup be extremely mindful to know where you need to think about risk mitigation and where you just need to move fast and you know what happens many times you like an individual leans on one side a little bit more mm-hmm. right like so for example i'm an avid risk taker nihar is the stack opposite mm-hmm. for example mm-hmm. right but that's the beauty of working in a mm-hmm. team so while one person is just mm-hmm. like wants mm-hmm. to run mm-hmm. there's another person that will be like okay we need to think about these things mm-hmm. and it's great mm-hmm. to have that voice tell mm-hmm. you you know what we're missing mm-hmm. these things about about taking mm-hmm. this decision uh, and i think that's the beauty of the team mm-hmm. so i think you spoke about why you spoke about you and nihar being uh, yeah. very very different oh so the equation that you're manage- managing is a very beautiful but a very very difficult equation to manage <laughs> yeah you know, nihar's my know. husband by the way in case you guys don't know <laughs> so on one hand uh, one of your co-founder is your husband on the other hand the other is you know a brother uh, so i feel your closest relationships can emotionally take you up and they also can emotionally really yeah. take you down yeah so how are three of you uh, you know managing this equation and how did you decide for three of you to even come together <laughs> yeah i mean guys i have to say i'm really lucky because you know who gets to work with their husband and their brother because by default you become the boss right because <laughs> they don't have an option but to bow down <laughs> no but just kidding um i'll tell you like where we started right i think it's it is extremely fragile obviously these are relationships that you don't get a second chance at mm. right um but i think in the very early days when we decided to work together we very clearly set out roles and responsibilities we were like you know such in business strategy funding nihar um operations end to end growth end to end right and we was relationships and we was like bring all of the brands on board manage those categories plan the strategic roadmap for yoga life so it was extremely clear it was all of the content the organic marketing that we do right and so typically when we're sitting together on a table and obviously we have debates right to say that we all just agree would be like you know you would be like steps away from creating magic we fight we argue but we leave the room saying listen you're responsible for this you decide this is my opinion and i think that has been extremely clear for us from day one i think the other beauty of working with people you you love dearly but also they you know people that have seen you through like literally your entire journey because even nihar and i like we go back from when i was 18 years old like wow. you know so it's a really really long <laughs> yeah. time he's seen me become the woman i am today right um i think the beauty of that is that we recognize each other's strengths and weaknesses so well that without asking we can cover for each other and that's you know that's just magical mm-hmm. right because there is no question of like egos or you are doing more of this and i'm doing less of this and it, it i think that doesn't matter i think the third is um underlying trust the beauty of going into a workplace where you know that the three founders are only driven by one thing which is the success of yoga life i mean you can just sleep so peacefully at night because you're like everyone's making a decision keeping that core thing in mind right um so i think that that is is really really beautiful but yes i mean there are instances where you will take work home you might have really big disagreements on the way that you know you want to run something or the way you yeah, and a lot of times that comes in terms of the way you want to handle the team most times right um 
I think we remind ourselves often that when we leave this room, so this is all professional, all of our fights are professional. When we leave the room, all three of us will go get a beer together and everything sets, sets back to zero, right? So, I mean, for me, I have to say that I love, like I truly cherish and value that I'm having this opportunity to build with my husband and brother. I think you've got to be very, very lucky to have this. Nice, interesting. So, uh, but when you, I think you've hired a great team. Yeah. Um, as I told you, I've been lucky. following you guys since uh, <laughs> a very, very early stage. Also, you've hired a great team in Mumbai, uh, you know, being a yeah. e-com platform, which itself is is, is quite commendable. Uh, so, have you faced issues wherein people have felt that, uh, you know, the three co-founders are related to each other in some shape or manner? Yeah. Uh, will it be a, you know, professionally run platform? Sure. Or, you or know, will it be, will it like, be some, like a yeah. family uh, uh, you know uh, yeah. business and yeah. how have you guys kind of handled you know this has this bias come in yeah so you know fortunately I think all of the three co-founders we have a pretty um, I I, I should, wanted to be modest but well the thing is that all three of us come from like very decently international organizations where we've all had extremely professional careers right like Sachin is the ex-CFO of Nike I was with Amazon in Europe and Unilever in Singapore Nihar has been with Amazon across Europe Singapore was managing it for UAE and a bunch of places right all of us are extremely highly educated um, so I think that that enough was you know that was enough for people to have trust when they met us right and honestly you know when you're hiring at a leadership level yeah it's not about you know I, I don't think it's about um, like, okay, yeah, money and all of those tacticals is on one side, right? But if you vibe with the founding team, if you like, you know, you come in there and you really trust and you sort of believe in the dream. I say that everyone who's on leadership, if you don't believe on the dream, you don't belong, right? Um, I think that that is something that we were lucky to find in the three additional leaders that we've brought on board. They, they, they really sort of were completely one with the vision. Uh, you know, and I, we actually spent a lot of um, informal time together to ensure that they come in with a place of trust and they come in knowing that they're one of us as opposed to it's the three of us against the uh, against the other three. So, um, and I, I would say, and maybe you should ask them this question, <laughs> uh, but I would say that we've done a fairly successful job of managing a good equation between the six of us. Like last weekend, all of us were together, Lonavla, with the kids, uh, spend the whole weekend together. It was fun. We were brainstorming in the pool, but so what, you know? Um, so I think we've done it right so far. It's been good. But uh, this this thing that you told that if you if you vibe, uh, yeah, you can really work together. So sometimes, uh, and this happens very often uh, with me, and I'm sure this would this this would be a generic thing. Uh, so you may vibe with some people, but you know that. Uh, Maybe the people who you don't really vibe with are the people who you want to hire because they are better, you know, sure. for your business rather sure. than the people who you vibe. So sure. when you say vibe, what, sure. what what do you really mean by vibe? Yeah, I mean, see, I'll tell you what I mean, right? So when it comes to functional expertise, I would agree with you. Hmm. Um, but leadership roles are much more than functional expertise. There are people that really have to take on this cohort of a team and work with them to sort of direct them towards this broader goal right and when I say vibe I think the the underlying is actually trust where you know when you're sitting in that room you know that again everyone is driven by that same objective of making yoga life you know sort of the circle of trust of health for India um, and I think that's very important right so I'll give you an example like I remember in the for the CTO role we met a lot of people right very technically forward people, very technically advanced people. But when you're in such early stages of the business, you've got to have people that can really, you know, carry your dream forward to their team. And it's not enough to be a great individual contributor because then that's not how you build sort of large successful businesses. Yes, I mean, there are roles within that. Like there are management roles, yes. But I would fully prioritize technical expertise over, you know, anything else. But I think leadership is a is a fine balance of, um, you know, it's a fine balance of really being able to lead as opposed to being able to manage. It's a fine balance of a person really being able to trust in the vision as opposed to just being like, you know, 
this is how i want to build independent of what you guys are saying so i think that you know that sort of the the north star we've taken in while bringing leadership on board um you know and hopefully time will tell that that was the right decision <laughs> so do you do you get time to uh, keep yourself healthy every day <laughs> <laughs> oh god you shouldn't ask me that question <laughs> to be honest in this moment no i've fallen off the health wagon mm-hmm. because um I also have a two and a half year old at home. So basically, Huga Life and Naira, who's my daughter, um, are the same age. <laughs> wow! <laughs> um, and obviously, that's like having two babies at once, right? Uh, so I, I, I have to say that I've not been good about it in the last two months because I had a bit of a, of a back injury, and then it just sort of, you know, it's, it's always hard to get back on it. Uh, but i would say a couple of months prior to that i was i was doing well i was doing well on my uh, you know kickboxing and stuff like that i would make sure i did some pool time with my daughter uh, my supplement stack was like on my table um but um you know it, you're absolutely right in asking because you know i often times when we are sitting in office we're like india ko to healthy bana liya yaar hum log ko kya you know like it happens because you're just you literally working 24/7 if you're not doing it physically your brain doesn't stop um but we've actually all made a pledge hopefully now in the coming month to start getting better we're not waiting for january at wow. least so yeah so you should recheck with me in november how we're doing on that and uh, in this journey are you trying to make your family healthy or, you know as well 100% so i have now become this spokesperson for all things health wherever i go wow yeah so i'll be like this is happening you need xyz supplements this is happening you start working mm. out you not having enough mm. water you're not whatever mm. Mm. and the great thing is that they listen mm. um like i mean you know like my my parents are incredible role models of how they listen to me wow. i don't listen to myself which is a different story but my parents are 60 plus they do weight training four times a week wow. they have protein shake every single day they've been on their supplements for the last 10 years now um and i think like some days i feel like my mom has more energy than me so i mean you know obviously she's doing something right but they listen so i think i'm i'm influential in the health space i've not managed to influence myself yet. wow yeah <laughs> so a person who works in a corporate life has a very very sedentary uh, you know lifestyle and life takes over responsibility takes over yes given you are influencing your family uh, and you're very very closely connected in the space so if you have to just give a uh, some easy quick tips you know to uh, the viewers uh, in terms of how they can really be healthy or uh, what would that be so i think that uh, one of the things that we at yoga life have tried to do and if you if you see our tagline also we say choose health choose yoga life right and the reason for that is actually what we're trying to tell you is that independent of where you are in your health journey you can choose to do a little bit more today mm. right and so let's say we're talking about someone in the in the sedentary space right a very simple fix is can you bring in protein with every meal you eat mm. right um can you change the order of the way you eat food so eat your protein first eat your fats second have your fiber and then have your carbs right it manages your sugar better it's small fixes right now for someone who's extremely evolved who's like um you know lifting and is is spending like say 9 10 hours at the gym he is also looking to get a little better on his health journey right so i feel that depending on the journey you are at the only piece of advice i would say is that try and tell yourself that you will be a little bit better tomorrow yeah and maybe start somewhere start somewhere yeah you know i think the the, the problem with a lot of us when it comes to health is that we have been um, you know sort of blinded by this this image of what a healthy person looks like i think that's massively incorrect right like i can guarantee today that i can do more squats and look i'm not a i'm not a i'm not your ideal uh, size and shape of what india thinks is healthy but i know that i can do probably more squats than anyone who you think fits that bill right um i don't think that when people start their health journey they should be like this is where i want to get to no that's not what health is about because you know what health is a lifestyle it's about consistency it's about doing and staying at it every day so it can't be a goal yaar it's a journey you have to do it every day i think that's the biggest like if i have to give one piece of health advice i'm like think of health as a journey because if you think that you have somewhere to go and get there then you will give up. you'll really give up before you get there so you guys have some very interesting investors 
or write at a very very early stage yeah. uh, you have katrina kaif you have yes. kl rahul you have yes. sikora so how did you manage uh, to get these investors how was the journey <laughs> of fundraising <laughs> <laughs> long <laughs> let's put it that way um you know i mean uh, look i you know again I, i i always say like i feel like entrepreneurship is a mix of hard work and luck and right things happening at the right time um and so for us in the in the very early days obviously you know sachin is is relatively famous in the startup space because he was part of the nike zero to one journey and so when he left just before the ipo obviously there was a lot of eyes on him yeah. right like what's what's he going to be yeah, up to yeah. next yeah. i also um, had eyes on him <laughs> yeah you know who wouldn't <laughs> yeah. who wouldn't because he was like the talk of the town yeah so right? i was like can i place him somewhere <laughs> exactly <laughs> Very interesting exactly. candidate has moved out yeah. exactly um and so obviously there was a lot of like in, including the investor community because also sachin yeah. was part yeah. of like was obviously doing a lot yeah. of the raising and nike as well so do you think uh, Uh, every consumer brand should have celebrity investors e- does it give you a, a edge mm. over uh, other consumer brands i think it depends on the size and scale of the business mm. that you're looking to build mm. i think it also depends on how cluttered or uncluttered the space that you're building in um i think it also depends on whether that's a category that a celebrity can influence right so like in the health world the reason we went with katrina kaif and kl rahul is because we really believed that so katrina also right like if you meet her she is like a walking talking health guru mm-hmm. she knows more than many many nutritionists today that you talk like you talk to her about supplements she will know what to pair it with what time of the day to take it she'll know the best supplements in the industry i mean we took people that really you know sort of believed in that and could stand for it right kl rahul i mean what's a better uh, example of hmm. incredible fitness and incredible hmm. health um, hmm. you know health hmm. ecosystems um you know because of the way he has recovered so quickly two injuries and he's still playing brilliantly at the world cup so we were very clear that we wanted to take celebrities that really stand for this and really believe in it and will will drive the right message i think that's what you have to be careful about when you're a consumer brand right like um to 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 find people that really believe in you and that really sort of tell that like you know um present the narrative in the right in the right manner is it a must have i think um i uh, you know i i would say that it's it's a very um personal choice and it's a very like depending on how large you really want to go so there are a lot of consumer healthy consumer startups uh, yes. you know which is there yeah so uh, from your lens because i'm sure uh, you would be going deep down uh, you know into yeah. all of this so which is your favorite and which do you, and which do you think is truly healthy and, <laughs> and and this is a slightly controversial controversial you know, question question <laughs> um no but you're right you know so like when we launched yoga life there was like 3500 brands mm. in the nutraceuticals plus health foods mm. and beverages space which are digitally available mm. okay and that was a primary mm. reason for launching mm. a platform because we were like you know we need to harness the power of all of these guys mm. and um, and and really present that to india um in terms of what i think is really healthy i think you you like i would say there are few basics which which just like you know if you're like a like a regular indian individual with a vegetarian diet i think you need to ensure that like your protein your d3 your b12 uh, you you're going to need supplements for these you're going to need supplements for magnesium right if you're looking to get brands out of me that's going to be tricky because obviously <laughs> i retail 400 brands so um, i can't take any picks but what i can share is that uh, you know we've we've launched recently a program where we go even deeper on authenticity and i think that's how you pick your brands right like you look at um at products which you know are authentically sourced that's one but also the back of pack is is um the integrity of the back of pack is maintained right so if someone is telling you there's 20 grams of protein actually does that product have it or not and also is it like um heavy metal free so we've launched h tested as a program primarily for this to enable users to you know sort of sort through the chaos of health and really say that listen if i'm taking this then at least i know i'm doing right by my health right because 
you know the supplement space in india for the longest time has been villainized um growing up like your mom like even me like I, like now i told you about my mom who's 60 and takes protein shake every day but when i was growing up and when i went through my own health journey and obviously one of my trainers was like you need to start taking protein my mother said don't take it you'll get big muscles i was like mamma it was that easy you know I, honestly <laughs> protein should have just been like it would be flying off like you know like hot cakes but um i think that uh, you know as long as you know that you're taking something which is authentic and which is safe then you can pick a brand based on your liking on your taste on um on your dietary needs but how do That's you know if something is authentic because uh, as a consumer uh, unlike you uh, i may not have the expertise to go deep down uh, yeah a lot of marketing what happens is also a lot of uh, yeah. you know gimmick yeah so if i have to know uh, you know what is authentic and what is not authentic how do i know that yeah tricky question so the way i look at authentic is i'm saying that this is sourced directly from the brand so i think that for example on yuga life you can be rest assured that everything on the platform is sourced directly from the brand there is no middleman that sells anything to us mm. okay so that is step one so there's no question of adulteration in that sense i think the second is the the um the integrity of the ingredients that are used or the integrity of uh, sort of ensuring that there is no toxicity uh, in that product um i think there's couple of things right i think you need to get better about understanding the back of pack so i'll give you a simple hack right uh when you see a back of pack label the order of the ingredients is written in the order of the composition so let's say for example if you read a back of pack and sugar is the first thing you read then that's not going to help you with your health because actually the highest concentration of ingredient in that product is that is is sugar right so that's one sort of very quick and simple hack that i typically look at i look at the ingredient order and i'm like okay this will work for me or not work for me um i think the second is i actually deep dive into into the reports that we so we actually publish the reports oh, on wow. so whatever we test you will see a report oh. so you will see 25 grams of protein in the test did you get 23 grams did you get 24 grams if there was sugar where they've said 1 gram do you see point eight or do you see 3 grams um and i think that's that should be our job as a health platform where we are like we're trying to ensure that our consumers are well informed mm. to make the right mm. decision mm. right so like for example we are now doing a series on how to read labels better mm. so we're doing also a lot of education mm. and a lot of awareness mm. so i'd say yeah follow our content you might be able to make <laughs> some better choices for health but this is a very tricky thing to do so don't wouldn't brands get upset that on one hand you know i have my product yeah. on your platform on the yeah. other hand you are analyzing and dissecting my yeah. product itself yeah no i think you know the so i think the beauty about this program is that the brands that are legit love it and there are actually a lot of legit brands out there right mm-hmm. see the the thing is that the reason actually a lot of india is asking these questions is because yes in the past things weren't mm. you know there was no pro, there was no protocol there was no testing guidelines like now fssai as well has changed their rules so you know in the past you could literally you had to just give like your packing label and it was enough to get an fssai number um now you actually need to so i think this this should go into this 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 rule should should be enforced probably 6 months from today or now maybe only 4 months i don't recollect but now you need to actually submit testing reports um already and so you your the whole industry is definitely moving in the direction of taking on more responsibility for the consumers that they're serving um you know so i would say that we all need to get past that phobia and definitely try and look for things like this right look for test reports look for uh, authenticity seals look for um you you find a lot of conversation on like quora's and reddits that talk about personal experiences on it right um but i've seen like i mean i've seen consumers and and it's amazing because you know like now consumers are like when they think about health they want to go that mm. they want to go that one step deeper mm. like mm. you'll be surprised how much the consumers know about health like i do consumer calls mm. like i try and speak to people that i bought from us like mm. random consumers mm. and they've done so much research on the product mm. they they've understood that back of back mm. they like humne aapka age tested report bhi dekha wow. fir katrina madam ne bhi bola authentic hai to fir humne liya you know wow. like literally to mm-hmm. that extent so it's amazing like i think that um that audience which was initially lazy about health is changing and they're taking that effort to understand the product a little better 
so is this just the urban audience or are you seeing this change what is the age group are you yeah. seeing this change in tier 2 tier 3 cities as well yeah actually you know i remember in the early days there were investors that literally dissed us saying this is a south bombay south delhi problem <laughs> Okay, and you and come also from South. Yeah, Bombay. yeah. So, मतलब वो लोग are you know like Sachin and I grew up at Penaru. Yeah. yeah. So you know it's so easy that we get yeah. dissed like that. Um, but the amazing thing is that so Yuga Life today has delivered to eight thousand four hundred pin codes in our country. So fifty percent of India. Wow. Okay, and so there's sixteen thousand pin codes, and if you see our split. we are equally split across tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 oh wow which is the most fulfilling thing for a business like ours because i didn't want to solve health just for the urban right mm-hmm. i wasn't like i'm here just to solve health for that busy professional who lives a corporate lifestyle because as i said right like i wanted to solve it for everyone whatever part of the journey they were in and so you'll see yes like everything doesn't sell everywhere Right, mm. I'll see a lot of interesting trends. Like mm. I'll see, like Northeast has a huge pull for women's health, mm. which is something mm. very mm. interesting to me, mm. and is is not something I could have hypothesized in mm. a boardroom, mm. right? Um, obviously, protein huge in the in mm. in the mm. north. Lot of herbal Ayurveda that goes down in the south. Um, so it's just a it's a incredible and in fact, you know, I remember the early days, like we were forty five percent tier two, tier three. Wow. Yeah, and then that evolved. Now it's a clearly sort of equal split, right? Mm. Um. and i think the beauty of that is that actually what we're beginning to realize is that education and awareness is there yeah tier 2 tier 3 also is beginning to understand preventive health as a conversation right people are saying that we actually want to feel better every day instead of trying to fix it when we are broken um the only thing was that they didn't have access to it right they couldn't get all of these brands um they, they they didn't have anyone to ask a question to a follow up question to so we have an assisted sales program as well right so if people are stuck and you you will get questions like this like biotin for example is becoming a thing mm. okay in india or collagen can i take it when i'm pregnant mm. um is it safe for me to consume if i'm lactating mm. Mm. i'm a man can i take collagen mm. you know mm. they they have questions like these and mm. they actually had no simple way to get an answer mm. and obviously everyone is like when it comes to preventive health people are not looking to you know go spend money on a consult and then mm, be told mm, you know like that i think mm, that mm. um change in attitude has still not come uh but you know this way i think they they getting easy access they getting easy information and they getting their their questions solved so i think that that's how i'm seeing it sort of evolve across the country wow so you guys are just not a platform from where you can buy healthy products but yeah. you can be a holistic health advisor absolutely you know, as well absolutely absolutely because you know and and so my eventual dream in the way that i want to build this is that i want to like can i get to a point of personalization by let's say if i'm like a diabetic 33 year old woman that suffers from acidity i get on to the platform and i say this is my consumer persona right this is me can all of the products that are shown to me by default be safe for diabetics right i don't want to have to go through the like i as a diabetic in the health journey will consume protein also mm. i will consume mm. my omega 3s mm. also i will take my biotin and my collagen mm. but now can i be or just can i have a filter which already shows me that these are products that are safe for you on the other hand let's say a man who suffering suffering from cholesterol right mm, mm. can he get onto this platform and get a like then whatever he browses he can he can have that peace of mind saying ki main isme se abhi jo bhi buy karunga i know that it is going to be safe for the make of my body wow that's how i want to eventually build it because i mean i i take i mean yaar it's a responsibility <laughs> it's not just a business <laughs> it's both but you know i i i don't ever want to like i think it will be my worst nightmare if i get a consumer complaint that says you you gave me a wrong product it harmed me or like i am diabetic and you sent me a product that has sugar or you know i think that for me will will be so much more hurtful than customer complaints aate hai delivery nahi hua ye nahi hua all that okay it's normal it's normal for any e-commerce platform but i think this would be a complaint that i would take to my heart and take very personally so 
so you're truly building a business with a soul yeah <laughs> i hope i mean that's the dream one one lakh app downloads in less than 20 days how have, what is the magic how have you guys done this <laughs> you know i uh, anna investors used to ask us this question before also you know before we launched and we used to always tell them listen there's no magic bullet i can't tell you that just do this and it'll work mm. because we're living in such a evolved consumer ecosystem slash network right like consumers today are influenced by so many things that what you've got to ensure is that you are able to touch them at every point of influence right so if you look at india today e-commerce is um 9% penetration well debatable anywhere between 7 and 9% which means people are buying on e-commerce okay but about 7 to 9% of india is buying on e- buying on e-commerce platforms but the other number to watch out for is that more than 30% of india and i think this number would have changed already by now is making digitally influenced purchase which means what right they seeing you somewhere on social they seeing you on an ott or they hearing some podcast or like someone like a like a luke is recommending uh, you know some mm. product right and i think that anything today in the marketing world is no more about it's no more about that one spear headed campaign like how we used to do in the older days right it's much more about talking to the consumer at all parts of their journey of influence in the manner that they want to be spoken to and i think the beauty of today's marketing is that you understand digitally your consumer so much more like in the past a lot of marketing was billboards and tv ads mm. you couldn't slice mm. and dice mm. right mm. could i tell a diabetic that this is for mm. you but could i also tell a gym bro that this is for mm. you i couldn't i had to say have the same message mm. Mm. Uh, but i think today that exists right mm. and i think that that's what you know like where i think lot of people get it wrong is that uh, you know performance marketing is this high where you do an ad you get it, you get some returns you do an ad you get some returns you do an ad and lot of times what is not thought through enough and often times i find my team also you know it they sometimes go into this because you're in such a high bias for action mm. state of mm. mind I'm like think about the message you want to land hmm. for the audience that you want to land it to, hmm. right? You can do spray and pray, you can do all of that, but I think that doesn't lend you well in the long term. Hmm. So I think the biggest thing is if you understand your consumer persona digitally and you you say the right message. And trust me, it sounds so dumb, right? Hmm. Like, kya ha? Sahi message hi to bolna hai. Like you you'll be like, it sounds so dumb, but I think it's the biggest crux of getting marketing right. Uh, and actually a lot of people don't do it right they get think, it wrong uh, i think most of the people do it very differently uh, yeah so i was hearing i was hearing a podcast where and i realized that uh, maybe the ketchup that we eat doesn't has tomato so it is yeah <laughs> it is very very easy to uh, get become very very creative and uh, you know get diverted from the core uh, you know purpose and it's quite commendable that you know in this you guys are sticking uh, you know to the message trying to <laughs> trying to i you know what i've done i've kept uh, i've kept brand custodians in the team hmm. because you know the way we say it in the office we're like performance marketing guys are mercenaries right <laughs> they are just like mujhe ye product do price price slash karke itna do and i can deliver <laughs> you this through as and so we actually kept brand custodians who come into these meetings hmm. where you're like you protect our brand story right you protect hmm. the fact that we're trying to build a health conscious generation for india let's do this like mm. uh, you know let's let's take it to something which is more than just a sales creative mm. Mm. um so so we're trying i'll tell you that we are from the vision i have we are very far away mm. yeah mm. but at least i try and remind ourselves and center ourselves around mm. what is it that we eventually want to build mm. but uh, don't you get sometimes in the zone that uh, maybe this may not yield me immediate revenue or maybe what yeah. the performance marketing guys yeah. are saying is better immediately from a business standpoint because you are also a vc funded business and there is absolutely. a number that you have to show month on month absolutely no i 100% agree with you right uh, and i think in the early days of the business um it, it's it's a it's such a fine balance between 
bottom of funnel conversions and still making a difference and still sort of and and I will be honest to say that in the very early days we were talking and talking to bottom of funnel right because you're still looking for PMF hmm. you're hmm. still looking to understand whether the audiences even have any sort of pull towards a business hmm. like yours hmm. so it's only fair that you will try and talk to the most evolved audience hmm. at the, at that point if you understand that there is acceptance you'll start moving hmm. you know towards other. so hmm. like for example Today, we've now like, I think eight months into marketing, we've now moved into, for example, we do a lot of offline activations. Mm. So we're at corporate tech parks, we're in societies, we're at gyms across, um, you know, the country where we go and talk about our mission, our purpose. We get people, um, you know, to, uh, we do a lot of fun activities with them. We get them into this conversation of health, right? Because, um, you know, I think that's something that at the very core we need to start building. And yes, there will still be days that you come back and you're like, is this yielding anything, right? But the we 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 depending on the kind of experiment we do, before we launch any experiment, the one thing that we 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 sit together and we decide on what is the success metric? What are we defining? Like if we are saying this experiment is successful, what is the success metric that we're going to track? That's one. And what is the time that we're going to give this experiment? Right? That is predefined. Which means that me after doing two offline activations i'm not going to sit and be like are isme to kuch revenue hi nahi aaya what's the mm-hmm. point mm-hmm. so we've decided that this is something we're going to run for 12 months and we are going to see uh, sort of where it goes and basically the metric that we're going to track is organic traffic mm-hmm. right then you commit to that mm-hmm. and then you you keep at that mm-hmm. right so that's the way we typically mm-hmm. um, go like come on yaar I, i mean in the early days you know when people were like spending on a production value to shoot with Katrina Kaif mm-hmm. and a mm-hmm. production value to shoot with KL Rahul mm-hmm. and guys like you know in this space like mm-hmm. working with celebrity space or like in the production space mm-hmm. like you're clueless mm-hmm. you get misguided a lot mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that are telling you stuff that you know you end up overpaying for a lot mm-hmm. of stuff mm-hmm. um, but for a business as young as ours to sort of take that punt because we're like authenticity credibility building trust with our consumers is only going to come from this place right mm. these are the guys that have built that credibility mm. narrative mm. now what we are going to build is the engagement narrative mm. right that's mm. going to come next mm. but we did it in mm. our early days that was mm. not a ruas mm. activity per se mm. right but we set out a 12 month benchmark to mm. see how it went and considering i'm doing many more shoots <laughs> i'm you know i would say that it's gone well so you you are you're raising naira you're raising Uh, you know yoga life how are you kind of managing that fine uh, balance or is there a balance uh, you know at yeah. all um you know i get i get asked this question a lot because i think a lot of uh, a lot of women especially around this age like when the mm. child is about you know when the child starts actually developing mm. eq mm. um is when it gets very very hard for women right mm. and in the past i would think that this is just a very um it's a ve- it's a very sort of gender uh, driven approach where mm. women are expected to mm. be at home mm. and men are not what i realize now is that actually children biologically need their mother much more mm. like for their emotional mm. needs they mm. they they will look much more to their mother than they will mm. look to their father right um but what i will say is that i think that having both at the same time has brought a beautiful sense of balance to both mm. so I think I'm a better mother because I have yoga life and mm. I get out there every day and I'm building and I'm doing something which mm. which has a greater purpose mm. and I'm doing something where uh you know especially when you have a girl mm. I want her to believe mm. that she can be more than what the world tells mm. her that she can mm. be and the the beauty of it is that I've had a ridiculously psychotic day at work my brain is on overdrive you know things are going wrong things are breaking but when I come home the balance of how you know seeing my child run up to me suddenly just makes it all like it just vanishes right so and so i always say like i feel like i'm a better entrepreneur because i'm a mom and i'm a better mom because i'm an entrepreneur which is uh, and and yeah i mean kudos to kudos to the extremely supportive family that i have on both sides um kudos to naira honestly who is an incredibly like i mean i think she's an adult for for being two and a half you know this is a girl who will come and say goodbye to me every day at the elevator it's not like mama needs to escape and i tell her that i'm going to the office because i'm building yoga life and she's understanding that and she's supportive of that so um 
look, it's hard. But I think you can do it. And I think you can do it if you ask for help. Yeah, if you think you're going to be supported by mind readers, that's not going to happen. Call out for help wherever you need it. And I think you can have both. So the last question, of, uh, rather, if, if, if there is a message that you would want to give viewers, whether it is about, you know, health or whether it is uh, just, I think we were talking outside that yeah. uh, entrepreneurship looks very fancy. Yeah. Uh, it's not about meeting Katrina Kaif or KL Rahul. Yeah. You need to get into it for right, yeah. you know, reasons. Yeah. Uh, so it's okay sometimes to not be an entrepreneur and yet have an entrepreneurial mindset Absolutely. and work for, you know, the right 100%. mission. So if there is any message that you would want to give yeah. from your life experiences, you know, to the users, that would be very good. Yes. Um, you know, so I always tell, uh, I te there's a lot of like young graduates that come to me and a lot of them come and tell me, you know, two years they've been in the work in the industry. They'll come and tell me, they're like, I don't want to work for anyone else. And so I want to become an entrepreneur. And, you know, the minute I hear that, I, I will guide them away from entrepreneurship. Because I think what you read about is the glory. What you see is Shark Tank. What you read about is, you know, these amazing success stories. So, you know, I was saying, I think people don't talk enough about the grit and determination, right? So, like, you know, when you're on your own and you've got to get up and you've got to go for a job, you've just got to motivate yourself. When you're an entrepreneur, you've got to motivate yourself. There is no one who's going to validate it mm -hmm. or give you that, Tick mm. mark ke yaar, ye achha ki yaar. Mm. And you've also got to motivate your team. Mm. And it's so much harder. Um, and I think that I would tell you that, you know, entrepreneurship is great. Like it, it will definitely give you a high like no other. Like when you build, when you see success, when mm. all of those things mm. happen. Mm. But I think get into it for the right reasons and go the way. Mm. You know, my, my dad always talked about, he's like, but that's a thousand day theory. And if you give up on the 900th day, hmm. yeah, that's three years. Hmm. If you give up on the 900th day, then you, you've, you've just missed out on something that could have been wow. hugely successful. Wow. Yeah. But I'll see, like, it is tough, right? Like, um, you know, as a founder, you will compromise on salary. You will compromise many times on mental health. You will compromise on a bunch of things, right? But don't do it if you're not going to stay the course. Because then doing it for one and a half year... And, you know, giving it up. Like, I know a lot of people that leave corporate and get into entrepreneurship and a year and a half later, like, the sexiness has fizzled down, right? And the reality sort of hit you in the face. Find coaches. Find other mentors in the entrepreneurship space because you're going to need people to lift you up when stuff goes down. For me, that's Nihar and Sachin, which is incredible. Like, I'm super lucky. Uh, but I would tell all budding entrepreneurs that I think that is the most important thing to get through this journey and be happy at the end of it thanks thank you so much for coming thank you Swati for having me I, I, I really it appreciate a it very very interesting conversation uh, I learned a lot personally in this conversation thank you <laughs> I'm surprised I have so much to learn from you guys but yes thank you thank you